for taking the time to speak with us today. And we will um, go ahead and get started. As a reminder for all of the media on the line, please use the raised hand icon if you have a question. And we will start with Brian Sandalow from the Chicago Sun-Times. Hi, Ezra, good afternoon, how are you? Good afternoon, Brian, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Um, just uh, wondering if there's any uh, clarity on the goalkeeping situation for Sunday. You kind of uh, teased something uh, post-game Saturday. And I was wondering if there was any update on that. Yeah, we're going to go with Brady this weekend. Um, we think that, you know, he's done well enough with the second team and, you know, deserves an opportunity to, um, you know, see what he can do with the first team. Uh, we didn't want to put him in the game in Cincinnati last week, just it being such a hostile environment there and with their fans and stuff like that. And just wanted to make sure that when we did give him a game, it was in a, you know, a somewhat more, uh, conducive environment to him succeeding. Uh, so this weekend, we'll give him the start uh, uh, with the first team. Cool. Thank you very much. And also just uh, following up then, uh, I guess uh, Gabriel Slanina is still out uh, with the head issue. Uh, what, it, what is that situation and uh, when did it happen? So this happened last week in training. Um, just came out for a cross and got uh, his head hit, um, even off his hip. And so he's been in protocol ever since um, and still is currently. So that's the situation with that. It was just one of those, you know, freak accidents. Thank you very much. I think he might have lost the internet, so I'll call on some people here. All right, Alex, go ahead. Um, Alex, go ahead. All right, thank you. You can hear me? Yes. Yep. All right, good. Thank you, Ezra. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I just wanted to ask that apart from winning, of course, is there anything else that you really want to see from the team this weekend and get out of this game? Well, you know, um, for the past three weeks, you know, we've talked about, you know, once we realized we weren't out of the, we were out of the playoffs, the, the, the whole vibe was, hey, let's finish on a positive note. You know, let's finish these three games, you know, the, the Leon game included. Uh, on a positive note, you know, every time we step on the pitch, friendly or not, we want to win games. So we definitely want to win this game, but we also want to make sure that we finish strong and give a good showing. It's a home game. It's a 25th anniversary uh, for our fans. So, you know, there'll be that kind of hype around the game. So we want to make sure uh, we, we go out on a very, very positive note this weekend. And I think the guys are in a mode that, you know, that that's very possible. You know, New England is a very good team. Even though they didn't make the playoffs, it's a team that's just one year removed from supporters' shields. So we're not going to take them lightly. But, we you know, we like the way that we've been playing. We, we we know we still have some work to do. Some consistency still needs to be there. We need to learn how to finish out games a little better. Uh, but, you know, a uh, positive showing this weekend is something that we, we're looking for. Alex, did you have a follow-up? Oh, all right, Brian, go ahead. Um, were you calling on me, Megan? Yes, Brian. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. Um, just uh, since uh, the last game on Saturday, uh, there's been some reports out about John Duran being on the radar of uh, European teams uh, and potential offers. Um, is there anything to that? And do you honestly expect him to be with the fire next year, or will there be um, a, a, a team coming in to uh, sign him? Well, I certainly hope that he's with us next year, but. You know, when you're a player of that caliber and that talent, you know, at such a young age, you know, I, I would be surprised if teams, especially European teams, uh, weren't looking or weren't paying attention. And also getting a call up to the Colombian national team, I'm sure helped as far as exposure for him. Um, but, you know, he's a fire player um, and he'll continue to be that until uh, otherwise noted. But uh, I can see why teams are very interested. You know, the kid has shown uh, what he can do at a very high level. Uh, he's he's come into a situation uh, where he's basically had to you know carry the team uh, on his back as far as the goal scoring production um, goes, and I, th I think he's handling that very very well. You know, um, still not quite the finished product, but you know he's his ceiling. And I always told you guys from from day one, his ceiling along with uh, Guti, these guys, their ceiling are very very high, and he's really they're both really showing you know. That potential, and I'm very happy for them. I'm, I'm loving the way they're they're progressing, and the way their their um, their, their careers is, is improving. So um, he's here; he's our player. But I, I can see why teams are very interested. 
And then with uh, Duran, um, obviously when he got here, he was pretty raw and needed some polish. And it looks like he's improved a, a great deal in this season. Where are some areas you think he has improved over the course of this season? And what do you attribute that improvement to? Well, the biggest improvement uh, is, is his, uh, him being able to play within the team structure. Um, as far as not so much on the attacking uh, side of things, because we want him to be, you know, show his individual limb, show, show his, his skill level. Uh, but uh, team defending is something that we pride ourselves on a lot here. And early in the season, he was having a little trouble with that, you know, just learning uh, the system, how we defend as a team, uh, because uh, we've always been a very organized team, uh, hence the 13 shutouts. And sometimes when you don't have uh, a team buy-in, a uh, total team buy and it becomes difficult and you start leaking goals. So I think from his standpoint, that part of it has been better. Also discipline. Um, a lot of times Duran didn't play early in the season was sometimes coach's decision, but a lot of times it's, it's, it was him um, being in discipline, yellow cards, you know, red cards, suspicion, suspension. I mean, you know, getting a, a yellow card on a, on, a, on a hard tackle is one thing, but getting it for kicking the ball away or throwing the ball or standing in front of the ball, those are things, you know, that maturity uh, level uh, of his, that, that professionalism has improved a lot, you know, and so it was easier for us to now start putting him on the pitch because, you know, he had, you know, a lot of those things he had overcame, you know, so, um, you know, but the talent was always there. Um, he's just, he was just raw and also just some off the field stuff that he needed to, uh, sort out and and that that ability to play within the team structure when we didn't have the ball was something that you know kept him off the pitch a lot of times. But you know we always knew that you know once we you know we got that discipline level uh, and that 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 team um, buy in uh, right, he would be a force to be reckoned with in this league, and and he's showing it. I'm just sorry. One more follow up. What did you mean by off the field stuff? Well, just, you know, sometimes, you know, in, in training, you know, he's a young kid, he's 18 and, and sometimes he, he could be a little hard headed, but, you know, he, he's, he's come around um, and, you know, we, we always want to, because it's team first, uh, our model here is team first and, you know, it doesn't matter who the player is, what your level is, if you're not uh, bought into what we're trying to do as a team, then it becomes difficult for you to get on the pitch. Uh, and I think just his... Uh, willingness to to buy into our team defending and, and, and stuff like that was was an issue at first but you know he's come around he's you know he's he's becoming a professional and he's learning what he needs to do when we don't have the ball so that when we do receive the ball he's in a good position to to do what he's been doing and and, and it, he's come a long ways and and we're happy to see that growth uh in him as a professional cool. thank you thank you next we will go, we'll take two more questions, Larry Holly, and then we'll follow up with Alex Calabrese. Hey Ezra, I'm curious just over this year, uh, what has stood out to you about the play, maybe the attitude of Brian Gutierrez? And obviously we saw last uh, you know, last week with a great performance. What's really stood out to you and, and his development here in MLS? Well, he's becoming more of a complete player. Uh, I think, you know, he's another one that's very talented, when we have the ball, he's very talented when he has the ball, but uh, a lot of times, you know, uh, the defensive part of it, you know, was not there. Um, and for us as a team, you know, everyone has to play on both sides of the ball. And that's something that he also has improved on a lot. Um, you know, he's been called upon at times when Shaq's been out to, to really step in and, and, and it's, it's big shoes to fill, you know, and, and we always tell him, you know, look, at the guys ahead of you and, and what they're doing and, and try to emulate them. And I think the kid has uh, grown into a very, very well-rounded player. And, and, and we're happy to see that. Thank you. Thank you. Alex Calabrese, you're up. Thank you. All right, Ezra, going into your last game of the season, it's also the last game of your first season as a head coach at MLS. So how would you evaluate yourself just both how you've improved over the course of the season, learning on the job a little bit, and just how you feel about your first season as a head coach in MLS. Well, I think, you know, I, I came into it saying, you know, there'll be growing pains. And it wasn't just uh, for the team. It was for myself as a coach. Um, and there were times uh, this year it wasn't uh, so easy uh, for me. You know, it, it's uh, there were a couple of games that you would say were let down games. And as a coach, whenever your team 
um, doesn't perform uh, the way you expect or the way you train or the way you're teaching them, uh, you reflect and you say, okay, well, did I did enough? Did I do enough? Uh, uh, not just to show them, but also to get them to believe that that's the right thing. I think when we went through that 10 game, uh, when we didn't win a game, that was very challenging for me. Um, and I had to really dig deep because it's hard to get players to buy into what you're trying to teach if the results are not there. You know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how well you play, uh, how well of a first half you play, but if you come out in the second half and you, you you let the game slip away, then, you know, it's really easy for players to start, you know, questioning what it is that you're trying to do. You know, is it the right thing? Uh, you know, um, so just learning uh, how to deal with different players, um, learning how to deal with setbacks uh, throughout game, from game to game, um, and not getting too caught up in, you know, um, the situation at hand uh, was something that, I had to learn, you know, because there were times this year when um, it, things didn't go so well. I think um, someone was telling me a stat. I think maybe Philly is the only team that had more first half shutouts uh, than we did. And so that says, OK, you know, the first half, you're able to keep uh, teams at zero. Sometimes you even get the lead. But then in the second half, uh, for whatever reason, you know, the team's the team is not able to sustain a league or a lead or sometimes not able to chase uh, a lead and, and why is that you know why why is this happening and it's, it's several factors but as a coach you know you, you you take that on and you 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 reflect and you you try to figure out okay what can I do different what could I have done differently uh, of, of course sometimes you know with injuries and with just you know not too much experience sometimes uh, to, to bring off the bench the, it, it kind of handcuffs you but you know uh, you still as a coach have to find a way to finish out games and I think some of these games that we didn't finish out, you know, I, I hold myself responsible for those because, uh, like I said, as a coach, you have to get the players to be able to play 90 minutes and not just 45 or 60 or 65 minutes. Um, I could think of two games in particular uh, against Columbus at home and against Charlotte at home where, you know, I wish we could have those games back, you know, um, but they're gone now. But, you know, I just got to make sure that we learn from those those games and, and, and continue to grow as a team. I think the team has grown a lot, you know, and, and and we've improved a lot, but there's still a lot more to a lot more improvement that's needed. Um, even the last game, you know, being on the road uh, uh, against a team like that, that's such a good team, a well-coached team, very good fans, uh, very good atmosphere. You go up three, nothing. And then it's still nervy moments in the last 10, 15 minutes. You know, we as a team have to find a way to finish out games and be stronger when we're up against teams like that, because have we done that in a couple more games this year, we would be still possibly playing for the playoff uh, this weekend, you know, and I think we let that slip away a little bit. And that's, you know, I as a coach, I have to get better with that. And as a team, we have to become better at, at, at seeing games out because, you know, when you have 13 shutouts uh, in a season out of 34 games, you, you have to make the playoffs. You know, you have to find a way to make the playoffs because that's a lot of uh, games where you didn't get scored on. Thank you, Coach. Thanks so much for taking the time to speak with us today. And everyone for everyone else, we'll be back shortly with midfielder Brian Gutierrez.
Can you hear me? Mm, yeah. Great. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, as a reminder for everyone on the line, please use the raised hand icon if you have a question for Brian. And we will go ahead and get started with Alex Calabresi from SB Nation. All right, thank you. Hey, Guti. First of all, I just want to say congrats on making Team of the Week last week. And uh, second, I just wanted to ask, it's been a really it's been a really big year for you improving. You've met a lot of the goals you spoke about earlier in the year. I just wanted to ask, was there any piece of advice you received at any point during the year that really helped you push on and really helped you learn a lot? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, getting being able to train with these guys, you know, the experienced guys telling me, you know, just uh, look forward, be ready for any situation. And also going to camp uh, with the 20s also gave me a boost of confidence with the coach, with Mikey. You know, he's always talking to me, always telling me what's best for me. And uh, that just gives me confidence and reflects on the field. Thank you. Next, we'll go with Brian Sandalo from the Chicago Sun-Times. Sure. Hey, Brian, uh, thanks for making some time for us uh, today. Um, just uh, looking ahead now to the offseason, where are some things that you feel like you want to improve on and work on heading into 2023? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, basically uh, finishing my one-on-ones, you know, shooting, heading, of course, and just getting uh, fit for the new season. That's the main goals. Go ahead, Brian. Tantalo. Uh, yeah. And uh, just uh, kind of uh, building off of uh, that, um, just how important was it for you this season to start scoring and to start see and start contributing to goals? What does that do for your confidence uh, when you start uh, contributing to uh, scoring goals and adding assists too? No, uh, yeah, it gives me a great boost of confidence. It gives me, uh, you know, it makes me more, makes me more confident in the field. It makes me play free and, makes me it tells me that I could do it you know like I could do it and, and it shows on the field thank you next we will go to Larry Holly from WGN hey Brian thanks for the time today I'm curious over the course of maybe this season or even when you debuted in MLS what are the biggest areas you felt like you've improved on uh, and have become more as you kind of get into the professional game what are the biggest areas you think you've gotten better uh obviously yeah thank you um obviously um the transition you know from attack to defense uh that's i have one of my goals that i've been improving and um obviously uh i feel like i have more time when i get the ball and turn and I have more time and space on the wall so that's like one of the biggest things that that's helped me throughout the years and i can see more bad <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> more passes than I usually didn't see as, as I started, you know. Also going to ask you, you know, based off what you've seen this year, I mean, what are your hopes for the future of the club, you know, moving forward and, and how much, how much does it mean to you to be a part of that and a part of the vision for where they're looking to go? Yeah, obviously um, just being a full on starter and, you know, contributing for my team and making the playoffs and just having a good season and, you know, growing from there. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Larry. Next, we'll go with Hernan Espinosa from La Fiera Deportiva. Hey, Brian, uh, can I ask you in Spanish? Yeah, it's fine. Sí, está bien. Muchas gracias. Eh, el último partido de la temporada y en los estos últimos tres años eh, se te ha visto... Eh, tu juego que ha sido mejor uh, quería hacerte dos preguntas, la primera es uh, si tú te ves como un ejemplo para los jóvenes eh, de la ciudad de Chicago que pueden conseguir sus sueños uh, jugando y anotando goles para el Chicago Fire y la segunda es con el mundial eh, encima eh, ¿por quién eh, tú apoyas? ¿por los Estados Unidos o por México? Gracias Sí, gracias. No, sí, es, es un cada vez que toco la cancha y fuera de las canchas, uh, tengo que ser un ejemplo para pa todos los niños de Chicago y todos los niños de, de Estados Unidos. 
es un honor vistiendo esta camiseta y no sé, cada vez que cada vez que tomo la cancha tengo que ser un ejemplo y hacer las cosas bien y también fuera de la cancha hacer las cosas bien también. Y no, pues los dos, sí, los dos, voy a apoyar a los dos, los dos porque obviamente mis papás son mexicanos y también tengo esa cultura que tengo y también nací aquí en Estados Unidos y me dio todo para mí, para mí y mi familia y sí, apoyando a los dos. Thank you. We'll ask those questions in English now um, as well. So um, you've been with the fire three years already. How, do you see yourself as an example um, or as a leader for all the young kids in Chicago who look to you um, and hope to one day realize their dreams? And the second question is with the World Cup coming up, who do you support, Mexico or the U.S.? Uh, first question, yeah, uh, obviously, every time I step on the field, on the pitch, uh, I have to be an example. Uh, a lot of people watch me and, you know, they they see the homegrowns, you know, play on the field and it's, you, have to lead, you have to lead by example on, on and off the field and it's just an honor just doing that. And then also for the second question, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm going to support both of them because, you know, well, my parents are from Mexico and my whole family is from Mexico. So, you know, growing up watching them also and then, you know, also with the United States, you know, uh, they gave me everything for me and my family. So also supporting them and it's where it's where I was born. So supporting both. Thank you. We'll take two more questions. Um, we'll go Brian Sandalo and then Alex Calabresi. Sure. Hey, Brian, um, this weekend is a pretty important one uh, for the history of the club, considering it's the 25th anniversary of the club's founding on Saturday, and then Sunday is the anniversary match. Um, what does that mean to you uh, to be part of uh, the 25th anniversary? I know that the, the team was founded a few years before you were born, hmm. but um, just uh, wondering what that means to you to be a part of this and what you think the fire as a whole means to soccer in Chicago. No, yeah, it's a true honor and just true, just a true honor and being a part of this club and the the history of the club, it's it's really good and I just think, uh, you know, the fire means for Chicago is like working hard, you know, tradition, honor, passion. That's what I think it means. Thank you, Alex. You're up. Thanks, uh, Guti. I just wanted to ask uh, before, before you came on, Ezra confirmed that Chris Brady was going to be starting this weekend. So I just wanted to ask between so, him and a lot of the other homegrowns we could be seeing potentially this weekend, what does it mean to you to be playing in MLS alongside these guys you came up in the academy with and playing alongside them on the biggest stage? You know, it's like something, it's actually like something really crazy. It's fun, you know, you grow up with these guys playing. So at such a, such a young age, you know, starting with, with all these guys at, from 10, to 12, 13, you know, playing with Brady, Gog, and all those guys. It's like a, some, it's a cool experience. Uh, we don't take it for granted and it's just amazing, you know, it just brings a joy to, brings a joy to everyone. Thank you so much, Guti. Um, have a great rest of your Wednesday. We really appreciate you taking the Thank time. Thank you guys, here. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Brian.